Hey everybody, how you doing? Uh, <laughs> welcome to Bones Collector. And today, Lori and I just got done playing Paris, and we're going to talk a little bit about it. And it's a game by Kramer and Kiesling. I believe it's 2020, right? It's 2020. Yes. And I didn't get a chance to yes, play it during during 2020, but uh, we just got it and just got a chance to get it to the table. And this is our third play, fourth, fourth. play, fourth play. So we played it four times, and it, it took that many plays before I, I could decide whether I just really like it or I love it so I, I don't know but we'll talk a little bit first uh, here about the the components and stuff but the game plays in what was it 60 to 90 minutes I think no 90 90 minutes yeah. and it took us an hour 90 minutes 12 and up two to four players 90 minutes 90 minutes I think with four players it would be 90 and uh, since well, it, it took was, us 90 probably the first couple games. yeah well with the, since it's our fourth play it only took 60. So it's, it's a 90 minute game with four players and if you're familiar with the game, 60 for two. So and then somewhere in between I suppose, uh, three players. But you get this cool little cardboard piece, this is the Arc de Triomphe. You can set it in the middle of the board if you wish. It was, it did inhibit our ability to view the board so we set it to the side and the designers knew that and so they give you an option to be able to not use this and you can have the piece that you put in the center of the board where you can place your keys so that you don't have that obstruction going on during the game. Because you, it did. It, we I, played the first yeah. game using it. Using that and we decided that. Yeah. You're always doing what's over there. <laughs> and then each player will get these player screens, real nice chunky player screens, thick cardboard. I have mixed feelings about that too because... Yeah. They're you, short, so it's hard to see in there. Yeah, and you, so it's a big shadow. You, uh, Lori eventually took the lid off of her as the roof, and because you can't get any light in there to see how much money and stuff you got, but uh, it's still pretty cool. It's a pretty cool piece. These are really neat looking buildings. Everything else is thick cardboard. The bonus tiles, the buildings, the landmarks, the keys are made of wood. Each player starts out with ten keys that you're going to place around the city as you build the uh, city of Paris. In different regions, districts, I guess, and it has, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, six districts around Paris here, around the Arc de Triomphe, and you're simply going to be placing buildings in the city, in the in these re different districts, and collecting resources, and then generating, uh, turning those resources into points. So, and there are bonus tiles all around the outside, which we've picked them all up now, but there were bonus tiles all around the outside. <laughs> When you start the game out, we have you have three stacks of the city buildings, and your turn is simply going to uh, consist of placing a building and placing a key, and that's how the game is played. And all these bonus tiles will be around the outside of the board. Like, where are they going? Oh, they're I'll place them around here so you can get kind of a visual effect on and how... And there's an A group and they all go here, yeah. a B group all goes there, or a C group all goes here, or you can actually put them in numerical sequence, but it takes longer to set up that way. Yeah. So it's filled with bonus tiles around the outskirts of the city, and you're going to be selecting one when you build one of the first three buildings. One, um, twos, and threes, yeah. yes. Well, not, and, and, and you can actually go to a building that's already there and receive one of these uh, bonus tiles also. But these bonus tiles around the outside of the city are very important. So you need to think about those and, and um, not only think about the resources that you're getting uh, and, and collecting, but also what bonus tiles you're going to be getting on the outskirts of the city because it's very important to your point scoring and your ability to get extra money and resources. So, uh, it's And when you move around the bonus tiles, if you move to this tile, take this tile, you can't ever back up and take any of those. You always have to keep going forward. Yeah, so if you, yeah, when you skip ahead on the bonus tiles, you can't go back. So you got to make sure that you, you won't want to do that. There is, however, one exception. There's one of these bonus oh, tiles right <laughs> that allows you to go, yeah, back five spaces. One to five spaces back. Yeah, and then there's also one that lets you lets you select a bonus tile from anywhere. So oh, yeah. I guess there's two. Yeah, there's two. So, but other than that, you you can't go backwards on the bonus tile track. And then you're going to take those resources that you gather and build these landmark buildings. And these are chunky cardboard pieces also. Uh, once you get some resources that you need, because these are very expensive. This one costs three bars of gold. Not to mention, however, 
uh, many dollars that it takes for you to move up to that landmark. Um, and those have to be laid out in sequential order in the different districts. And also, once you get four keys in a district, there are point bonus tiles that, are, that you can uh, select. And they're in various, they're in varying totals. So the first one to get to them is going to take the, the one that says 20 points at the top. It goes 20, 18, 16, and 10. Goes or down to 10. 20, 18, 16, 14, 12, 10. 12, 10. There's, you could put one in each if you wanted. And they have three numerical totals for points on them. The second place person would get the one in the middle. And if you're playing with more, more than two, then obviously there would be a third place player getting points also. But you can place this in any uh, district, even though maybe this district is the one that got the fourth key. If the fourth key is placed there and you're going to place one of these bon bonus point tiles, you don't have to put it there. You can put it in any, any district where you have the majority. So it's an area control thing when it comes to these. You could also, if, you, if I knew you had the majority somewhere and I couldn't touch it, I could put this one in, your, in there. So you would only yeah. get 10 points. You could do it that way too. So, yeah, so there's an area majority go thing going on as well as resource management and building buildings, I guess. So, yeah, there's, there's quite a bit going on in this game. And uh, after the first play, I realized it was going to take more plays to really get a feel for it. And I told, I told Lori that we need to play it a couple more times. So we did. We've played it four times now. And, and it's a very, very good game by Kramer and Kiesling. And I, uh, I enjoy uh, most of the games that I play by these guys. Uh, it's a great design duo, and I don't, yeah, I don't think it's my favorite Kramer and Kiesling, but it's a good one, and it's worth keeping for us. I, I really like it, personally. But once you've placed all those the three stacks of buildings, once they've been depleted, then you start a countdown sequence of these bonus tiles. What are these endgame bonus tiles? Endgame are tiles. Endgame tiles, and I forget how many there are, but uh, you start to I think there's twelve. Select these because your turn then is only going to consist of moving a key or selecting one of these yes. rather than building a building because the buildings are all gone. So you're going to select a key and move a key or you're going to take one of these bonus end game bonus tiles and there's only a set amount of these and once they, the last one has been selected then each player gets one more turn and the game is over with. So you got to be uh, aware of that and conscious of the fact of when the game's going to end because uh, again you're uh, building this thing up towards the end and trying to get as many points as you can possibly get. And Lori so won. You can end the game quickly by just taking these as fast as you can, but it might end up not working out so well for you if you do. <laughs> if you do that, then the opponent has a chance to perhaps catch up. Maybe you're ahead in the game and, and you want to get this over with, so you're, you're trying to take those. But every time you do take one of those, and they give you things like a point, some of the resources that you might need to, to score points, and uh, there's tiles with three dollars on them in here, but once you're taking those, your opponent is moving and placing keys and could quite possibly catch you if you uh, only do that. So you have to kind of balance it a little bit, make sure that that isn't happening if you're taking those endgame tiles. And everything you do, you're trying to score points. I mean, it's a lot to think about and how you're going to make that happen because you want to uh, combo those bonus tiles with what's happening in the districts and where you have your keys uh, because some of the bonus tiles will give you, um, I think it's five points, yeah, five, five points for every key you have on a number four building. So you're going to try and get those, if you've got, if you selected this tile, you want to get your keys on number four buildings before you cash that in. And that's a lot of points. I think I had four, so I had that one. Well, and, and you don't have to wait until the end of the game. Yeah. You, Sorry. Yeah. I, I, Talk yeah. Over again. yeah, so you, don't, you can do it any time. You can turn these so in any time. So I've got four keys on fours. So I'm going to turn that in, get 20 points. Then I can move my keys onto fives because maybe I've also got the tile that pays me for fives. You can do them at any time and then move them. You don't want to let the same person get that bonus tile that gives you points for fours and fives. Yeah. Because if you do score the fours, you're just... I mean, you've got the five tile, yep. the one that gives you you're bonus just five. Move to the five. You're just going to move everything up to fives to score, and that's really nice. I think the one time that I, that I did win the game, I had both those tiles, and I knew that that was going to yeah. turn out well for me and bad for you. So. Yeah, you have to pay more attention. You learn to pay more attention to the bonus tiles yeah. as you play it yeah. multiple times. But the resources are worth nothing at the end of the game. 
Money is worth nothing at the end of the game unless you have the one bonus tile that has a game end bonus of one point per dollar. Which you did, it was like 20 points. I did, did that, good. yes. And then the, the little prestige stars. You don't want to have anything left at the end of the game yeah. because it's, they're not worth anything. The resources you can actually sell for cash, which I did when I had the, I had this tile that gives me a dollar for every or a point for every dollar. But if you don't have that bonus tile, you don't get points for money either. So you don't want to have a bunch of anything left over at the end of the game. And when you place a key in a district, um, you get oh, yeah. mo a certain amount of money, and it goes it starts at two, I believe. Yeah, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and wherever you place your key in that district, you're going to get that particular monetary reward. And you can also place one in the center of the board. You get nothing though, so it's hard to do. I mean, it's, I, it's the first, I think I've done it in one of the games. We didn't do it at all this last didn't game. Didn't do this at all this last game. But you get no dollars when you place a key in the center of the board in the on the Arc de Triomphe, which is, you know, that piece there. But it's pretty nice because when you go to move that key, it can go to any district and, and on any tile that isn't occupied. But it's hard to place something there again because you don't, get, you any don't get any money. And, and money's money, tight. Yeah, yeah, it's very tight. It's very tight in this game. So you're you're thinking about you're going to be doing math in this game, and saying, well, let's see, I need, I'll need three dollars to do that, and I've got this x amount of dollars to do that, and you're you're going constantly going over how much money you have, and then also doing these landmarks is huge if you can get them done. But they're mm -hmm. very expensive. They cost resources and dollars, whatever the difference is. Uh, when you're moving a key from building to building, you only have to pay the difference. And so you have to calculate that, again, when you have your money. Do I have enough money to get there? Do I have enough money to do this? And we and, built uh, six of them this time. That's more than we built that, in that any of the few. games. Yeah. We, we built six landmarks. And then uh, you cannot occupy a tile with two keys unless you have... I had both bonus tiles. One of them allowed me to put one of my own keys on an occupied building that had my key on it already and the other one allowed me to put one of my keys on an opponent's and he did both. landmark and I did both <laughs> and it scored some points but it just wasn't enough to squeak it out but uh, she did very good with a couple of different things in this game but I really like it you have to play it a few times you can't yeah. play this game once because the end game once you start getting all your resources and getting things going it gets pretty tricky uh, trying to balance the bonus tiles that you're taking and when to cash those in, trying to accomplish those goals, because on the bonus tiles, again, you want to make those things happen so you can score points. And then you're trying to think about landmarks yep. and, and, you know, getting your keys up to landmarks. Because once you run out of resources, you don't have them. The only way to get them is to get these end game tiles or purchase or them. Buy them. And man, money's yeah. tight. You can't. I have. Did you purchase any? Yes, resources I you bought did? wood one time because okay. you can't move to an eight tile without wood, which I forgot about. I didn't have any wood, so I had to buy it. The rules as you first are learning the game, the, what are these called? Prestige. Prestige tokens are on the one, two, and three buildings, I believe, aren't they? I think so, yes. And uh, and so that works to the player's favor. Yeah, because you have bit. them. Yeah. Yeah, and they're on one, two, and three. Yes. yes. But when you play this advanced variant, you mix them up and just place them out at random so that you don't know. Well, the gold goes on eight. Yeah, the only one, yeah, gold yeah. goes on eight. But everything else is random. So And it's harder that way. Yeah, and there's a lot it's, to think about. And it's the fourth game, I thought, at least I understood and felt like I knew what I was doing. Yeah. But that was the first, probably the first game I actually felt confident that I was doing it right. But the board is modular. It's kind of jigsaw pieces around yeah. the Arc de Triomphe here. And then uh, these bonus things are in pieces or they get put or placed around the board so it's kind of a modular board type of thing but it's always going to be the same. Yeah it tells you how you know the, the cities are always going to be in the same place. But I really like this game it took me a while. I, I First time we played it I don't think you liked it. Yeah I didn't it was like <laughs> this, this is weird and the because the it, it's uh, I don't know how to describe it because as the game goes on uh, you're really starting to do some heavy duty planning at the end. Well what, how would you rate it? Like what? One through ten. No, one, one to ten. Um, I, I would give this game because, okay, it's because <laughs> it's a perfect complexity for us, I think. It's not overly complex. It's just a game where it's going to take a lot of planning and thinking about every single round, every single move that you're making has got to culminate in something in this game. And so I really like that. And so I would give it a solid 8.5, maybe a 9. 
with another player. I was going to say 8 to 8.5. Yeah. So you're a little higher than me. Yeah. But I would say at least an 8, maybe an 8.5. And again, if we played it a few more times, <laughs> it might even move up from there. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, this is a good game. You need to keep playing it and playing it and playing it to figure out, oh, wait a minute, I should have done that. It definitely isn't going anywhere. I don't know that I like it better than Porto Nigra by Kramer Kiesling because I'm in love with that game. <laughs> See, I like this better than yeah. Porto Nigra. I love but again, Porto I've never won a game of Porto Nigra. <laughs> He wins every single time. I, it's a little, I, I don't know, Porto Niagara is a little more complex, I think, but for whatever reason, I, I just take to that one really well. But I love this game. It's going to go in our library. For I was sure. afraid it was leaving after the first time we played it. I thought he's not going to keep this game. I don't know if I, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what I would kick out of my top 10 of 2020. I probably would kick something out and put this game in there. I didn't have it to... to well, uh, we have a few more 2020 games to play, and then maybe yeah. you can do a revised list for 2020. But again, it lives up to the talent that these two show when they develop and design a board game. Kramer and Kiesling, I really, really love them. we got so many games with them. Generally speaking, when I see that they're de designing a game, <laughs> I want to check it out. Oh, by the way, we just got Renature. We just is, bought Renature. We haven't tried it yet. Haven't tried it. But that's them too, right? Yes. Yeah. Kramer and Kiesling also. So. so we'll let you know how that we'll let one goes. let you know how that one goes, yeah. <laughs> And, uh, but that's Paris. Have we forgotten anything? I don't think so. Yeah. There's the box. We showed you the back. That shows you how it's It's a nice, sturdy box. Yeah, which real I, nice. Yeah. Yep. And the keys are wooden, so that's yeah. nice. And these, uh, what are these guys called? I don't remember. But the, the move around the bonus uh, tile Those track. Those are just called the bonus meeple. The bonus meeple? <laughs> which is what he does. Yeah, they're kind of cool. They look, you know, look, it's a bust of a guy with yeah. a little top hat on. Yeah. So. That, that's pretty neat. They're wooden, so. And then you just have little wooden discs to keep track of your score, right. so. Yeah, it's an excellent game, and it's a deceptively complex because, again, everything that you do has to have an end game, and so you have to think about which resource, what am I going to do with the resources I'm getting, because you don't want to waste them, you know, and, and I have. Well, our last two turns, did we do anything? Yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think we did because there was nothing else to do that would get us any more points. Yeah, the first game you had a whole yeah. stack of resources yeah, you, left over. You have to have some, you have to be thinking every time you take something, uh, how am I going to use that? Because even in this game, we ended up at the end of the game uh, having things that we just couldn't do. Yeah, didn't we, had, have the we money. both passed our last turn yeah. because there just wasn't anything left. Yeah. I had money, but none of it was going to get me enough points to warrant losing the money I got from my bonus tile. So it, yeah. So I, I guess I didn't plan it as efficiently as, you know, 100%, but you try and do the best you yep. can and use everything that you've We've gathered. gotten better a little each time. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, I really like it. And again, you have to take everything that, when, when we talk about board games, you have to tell yourself, well, they're playing it at two-player. Yep. That's the only way we review these games. We play them at two-player. Yep. I really, really enjoy it. I liked it the first time we played it. Yeah. It's, it's uh, again, this is a game, uh, you know, now that we've played it four times, I feel like I know the game and I would like to play it again and again and again. Mm -hmm. But uh, it took at least that many times yeah. to understand um, the, you know, how to be efficient in this game. And that's it. Yep. All right? Yep. All right. That is it. Make sure you like and subscribe. I love every one of you. And never ever forget to keep on board gaming because it's the best hobby on the planet. And we'll see you the next time on The Bones Collector. Say bye, Lori. Bye, Lori. <laughs> see you guys.